All those years you were watching us? Did you ever know my father? Neither did I. This much I know, he wasn't you. Anything you were to me is ashes now. good Taika Waititi impression. <laughs> That's actually probably my problem. I've been trying so hard to get New Zealand down <laughs> that yeah. I can't do anything else. That was a really good Korg. <laughs> Did you know my father? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off, ghost. <laughs> yeah, fuck off, ghost. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome Goodbye, back, Doug. everybody, to Podcast <laughs> of the Rings, your go-to source for buy-the-book recaps of every <laughs> single episode of Rings of Power. Here we are in Season 2, and we are Ooh. here! It feels like the finale, but it's just the finale of the three-episode premiere, which we have been mixing and matching for our viewers' pleasure, and definitely not for their confusion this entire time, but now... It's impossible for us to mix and match. We can talk about any episode we want to. We can talk about Tootsie Rolls if we want to. Anything is, everything is available to us. Only Show the us- rectangular ones. <laughs> Show us your mug. What's up with that mug, though? Oh. Nice, nice. If you follow us on Patreon, I'll show you guys the map of Middle Earth that Ben, ben sent me for Christmas that is now adorned on my ceiling. Not my ceiling, my wall. So look, we take th- this is where the happiest family lives, right there in Mordor. They, <laughs> they they just want peace. They just want to raise their kids in a nice little Mordor suburb. We, I have mixed feelings. We'll get to that. I'm glad we finally got to see, like for certain, a female orc. We did see a female orc in um, the speech that Sauron was giving, his misbegotten speech before he was brutally murdered over and over again. Um, I saw a tweet that was really good saying that Sauron wasn't really talking about the orcs, he was talking about himself. Like, the Valar will never mean? accept you, men will oh. never look at you at anything, elves hate you. It's just like he's literally just like talking to himself right there, so I was like, oh, that's a, that's a good little catch right there. Classic narcissist move, actually. Yeah, that's all I can think about is classic narcissism. And we're all, I don't know if you've seen, we're getting awesome comments from people that are like helping like fill out some of our questions we have, like, why is Galadriel getting to keep the ring? Um, the best comparison uh, someone shared with us is... It's like Sauron's middle management that just got promoted to a big job. And now he's like, all right, guys, I'm in charge. And, and he's like totally a loser at this. And everyone's like, fuck you, dude. We, we ate bread with you. We know you, you know. Yeah. Uh, you shit just like us. He might. I don't know if Sauron shits. But uh, yeah, we're getting really lovely takes from people. We cleared the hurdle of getting the hate takes. And we've gotten the nice people that are looking for people who just enjoy the show. Honestly, I think, like, we're going to talk about it this episode. I think, like, the biggest hate take so far is the orc family. The nuclear family of orcs. Is that right? I have... You know what it is? I'm not, on, I'm not like, combing Twitter for people's opinions, so I haven't seen it. Again, I get, I get the best of both worlds on mine. You really do. You're just the perfect demographic for yeah. elon's like no dude you'll get it one day i promise you're Free gonna speech, get it bro <laughs> this is, i did this for you ben right <laughs> i bought twitter for you you are his demo so hard that it actually hurts his feelings that you're not his demo like literally there's that there's this podcaster really where he's talking about like trump as soon as he gets elected he needs to like take over the courts like, uh, and start prosecuting Democrats, and then, like, his co-host was like, yeah, and then, you know, death penalty, because treason. And, like, Kamala's, like, Twitter, like, just posted the clip, and they're like, hey, this is what they're talking about, and the guy court tweeted, he's like, I'm gonna sue you. It's like, you said it! it. (laughs) Wow, yeah, repercussions. For your own podcast clip? This is, like... (laughs) She gave you the best advertising, bro. (laughs) Kamala, retweet this. <laughs> um, no, but it's been really nice to like get like people who just really want to like this, who can like suspend disbelief and just enjoy this. It's been it's been really nice to get those comments. I actually went to bed last night going, "Oh yeah, we got to see like a smart orc and his baby and wife." 
what the fuck? <laughs> it actually bothered me too. It, yeah. Here's, here's where I, here's why it bothers me. Um, because I have a heart, unless those female orcs are staying back behind, I have a hard time believing that orcs aren't going to eat the babies and that they all die in bed. Like, where are these babies while they're fighting? And like, I understand at our, they're at home collecting scrap metal. We can do it too, girls. <laughs> Well, no, I mean, if we go back to season one, um, Adar refers to them as his ch- sons and daughters. Yes. So he does say that there are female orcs there. Uh, it was, I think it was kind of hard to tell. Oh, yeah. That I'm not mad them... about the female orc. I'm not really no. mad about anything. I just don't like, I don't like. I'm aware don't... what you're yeah. saying. What I'm trying to say is like, now they're kind of like putting their flag in the ground. Like, no, they mate. They have kids. Like, this is, they're not pulled from the ground like the Urukai, you know, like. They're not corrupted elves. They're like trying to say like this is a full fledged um, species in that sense, mm. which you know we we very rarely have storytelling that doesn't just wholeheartedly wholeheartedly demonize the orcs, you know. So, but it's it was just weird. This guy is like is really is really well spoken, which is awesome. <laughs> but then he, he t- touches the head of his little orc baby. It's so weird. That was weird. It was it's just like, weird. I don't know. I'm okay. Like with the orc family, I'm okay with that. Uh, but I'm also, you know, it reminds me of like when they made Maleficent and then it was like, Oh, the, her tragic backstory of why she became evil. It's like, okay, bad guys can just be bad guys. Like it, it's okay for, for bad guys historically, and I know people have like brought up uh like old manuscripts or letters J.R. Tolkien has written saying that like, oh, I didn't ever meant for orcs to be like unequivocally evil, and he's brought up the fact that there definitely are orc women. So this is this is based on Tolkien lore. So anyone that's saying that is just referencing the Peter Jackson movies, not Tolkien, which is hilarious. Um But I don't know. I don't think I, like, I was, you kind of swayed me last season of like, oh, the orcs need a place to live. Oh, they are a people. Oh, they are like, kind of like this borderline enslaved race only meant for war, only bred for war. And like, they're just kind of tired of it. And the opening scene of this season was really good in showing that they're like, man, we just got done fighting and we lost and we're going to fight more? Oh my gosh, like, this is the worst, like, arousing speech ever, so we're going to murder you. I don't, I don't need this. I I think this is distracting. I think it's a little bit of overkill. I'm fine with the guy saying, like, hey, like, if Sauron's, you're saying Sauron's dead, but we have to go stop Sauron? And we have to go fight in Region, like do totally. We need, that, do was, we need that was that was a problem. This? That was a problem I had too. Although, like, I could see when Adar said, "No, he's dead," and then you could see the lingering shot in him going, "Uh oh," you know. Oh yeah, but, for sure. But he then knows he, something. But then he one yeah. eighties totally. You know, we don't see him like have unequivocal information that Sauron is in fact back, or he he just he just like tells them to not worry about it, and then now we're worried about it. So yeah. that is. That was a um, a hard contrast for sure. I'm, I'm I was on the same page with that. Yeah, I mean, I like the like you know we'll we'll cover all the the Mordor stuff. I feel like oh. that's the best way to do these episodes is just like story piece by story piece. Um, but I mean, nothing much else happens in Mordor besides the orc family and a big old freaking uh, troll Imran. showing up. Good guy, that guy is going to. I'm assuming that's this guy from the trailer that at our no not at our um. Arandir is like 300 jumping at like with his daggers and stuff in the trailer while Eregion is on fire. I'm assuming oh, that's him. Sure. Uh, but like, so I, this is I what's wish... going to happen to Arandir then. Hold that thought for a second. They're going to have him go up the biggest against the biggest orc who's trying to stab his eye out. Then they're going to have him go up against Dimrod. Then he's going to have to go against, is it Dimrod or Danrod? Something. <laughs> Dimrod I think it's Dimrod. Dimrod's a very funny name. <laughs> but then he's going to have to go up against an elephant. He's going to have to take a whole army on by himself. He's going to have to get gradually bigger <laughs> enemies. I mean, they're giving him the Legolas treatment. Like, they really in, are. But they in, you, you know, Fellowship, thoughts. like, he's just hitting, like, cool shots. In Helm's Deep, he's skateboarding down the stairs. And, and then in, this in one, Return he's of the windmilling. King. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like he literally does like a little sonic twirl out of the out of the carriage. Like I don't know why I'm not. That was overkill too. <laughs> it was 
insane. He's so sad. And he's like, ooh, kick leg. Yeah, <laughs> he's cool. definitely uh, got I, I some... cut you off from your thought, though. I'm so sorry. You were talking about Dimrod and... Aranya oh, no, I just, him. like, I, I wanted... And I think it's just, like, I love when, like, big evil characters, like, just grab somebody and just, like, kill them for no reason. So I kind of wanted him to just grab an orc and just, like, stuff him in his mouth or something like that. <laughs> well, that's why he had the head, right? Yeah. Like, he 100% killed that guy for no reason. He no killed reason. the messenger. I had a feeling that, that uh, I still, I, I can't remember. I thought Dimrod was the one who maybe killed the um, Linden messenger that was heading to uh, Eregion. I don't know why I thought that. Or maybe it was a, I don't remember. Because it definitely wasn't Sauron because we saw no, the, the bodies being, whites. They, we saw the bodies being dragged off with chains. Yeah. The Barrowites take prisoners like that? No, they're dead. They're just move. They're like hiding the bodies or whatever bear whites do with bodies. I don't. Okay, all right. We'll get to that eventually in the season. I, I, I I've not. Yeah, you my- said put money on it, and then you didn't say how much money. <laughs> Twenty five cents. Twenty five cents. <laughs> put it down. Okay. If it's if it's anything but the bear whites, I win twenty five cents. Yes. <laughs> okay. Great. Um, as long as we're on the same page, that's an agreement. I'm a man of my word. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I just want to like, yeah, get the Mordor stuff done. I'm totally with you that, um, it's just weird. We just didn't need to see, I don't know how else you explain that the orcs are living, feeling beings that also deserve to live too. I honestly think that like, just the guy, just him talking with Adar gives me that. Yeah. Like, oh, we've been fighting this whole time. Like we followed you because... You gave us, like, he says, like, we've got our home, we're protected, and Mordor is, like, the most insulated land there is. Like, you look at the, you look at the map, like, it's surrounded on all sides by a mountain range. (laughs) Right, right, right. And so it's like, y'all are good. You're cool. You're, Uh you're chilling in there now. If this is where you want to be, then this is where you want to be. Just relax. And so I think it is, like, a little bit of kind of writer's kind of writing themselves in, into a corner into of a like ending corner. season one with like showing Sauron going back into Mordor. I'm like, okay, we got to do something with that. And then having him getting captured, talking his way out of it. And now it's like, why, why are I'm now, trust me, I'm for a battle, but why are the orcs going to a region to make sure Sauron's dead? Like, have they gotten word that he's in a region? Like, it well, so they did like- send somebody after Halbrand, quote unquote. Gotcha. Right? Didn't they said like so follow him, and so we're assuming they followed him deep enough in there, and like Halbrand never came out, didn't come back with information. So they're pro- so probably again. This is where the time construct of what how long things take, like how how long did it take for Halbrand to get to Region, all that, like. It could be that they were waiting for a message and now, you know, Adar's like, nope, we got to go because something is going on over there for sure. Yeah, they're they're uh, they're fast traveling video game style a little bit from, you know, Mordor to Oregion and yeah, Lindon totally. to Oregion and stuff like that. So yeah. I t- I'm totally with you there. But it just seems like, I don't know, I'm I'm enjoying the writing. I'm enjoying the plot progression. But it seems like, OK, we got to. F- a battle in Oregion, and then they wrote backwards from that of like how to get the sure. orcs there and how to get Adar there, and so I'm just like, oh, um, uh, oh yeah, and then then throw in an orc family. Like, <laughs> I, I think it was just like the presentation of it, how he like he goes over to the. Mm. <laughs> it, I, I'm actually totally with you. If we had like seen it a little bit different, like, I again, I don't want to be the podcast. It's like they should have done it this way. It just was odd that he's walking with Adar. And they just so happen to stop exactly where his baby is. That bothers me. Yeah. I, I don't like the conceit of that. So show me a different way to see a baby. I uh, need I need like the full Armageddon shot where like the wife orc does the Liv Tyler and they sing, I'm leaving on a jet plane. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> For those of you that don't know and are just joining us, Ben and I did a Beyond Middle Earth series where we watched all the other movies that like you guys voted for the top uh, and we did Liv Tyler because uh, we did all we watched all the other movies from the uh, actors from the Peter Jackson and we did Liv Tyler's Armageddon and 
I have a pretty good video movie on that. Movie rules, if you're dude. That movie really did. We you movie you coined rips the salute so and shoot ems. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> She's okay. just so good too. So moving over, um, I want to save Numenor probably to the end because that's where the that's where like the episode ends. It kind of like bookends. Yeah. yeah, like the the episode like we start in Numenor and then we end. So let's say that for the we end. We can say though that this is the the least strong of all three episodes, right? Is that like fair to say? What's I? We can talk about Numenor now. No, uh, I'm just well, saying it's, it's just like because I I love the first part of it. I love where we start in Numenor, where we have you know. Marizan and oh, yeah, yeah. Miro being the queen and using Elendil as her eyes, and then her kind of seeing like, oh, this guy Belzegar is like chatting up with Farazon, and I don't like him because he didn't like my dad, so he's only here for political reasons. Mm-hmm. And then seeing the the woman like come up and slap Miro, which is Holy like, leash. We've been I... watching too many, too much Game of Thrones because that woman would have had her head on a pike like that. Like I think she was going to, and that was the whole point was Muriel stopping them. Like that woman should have died. Like no, the, yeah. she, Muriel shouldn't have had a second to say wait. Like that was a shocker. Yeah, a Region <laughs> Numenor. A, a, let's uh, let's buff up the security of these places, okay? <laughs> How the you guys fuck might have armies. Wo- I need a better like TSA. <laughs> is this hobo though that she gets to be there for the shipping off of her dad and <laughs> and smacks her in the fucking face <laughs> what what rank is she that she gets to okay, be there okay <laughs> uh this just in Jessica's a it, like starting the class war in Numenor right now <laughs> but seriously what the fuck is she doing there it makes no sense, and that's how her reaction is just smack her. I c- I couldn't believe it. I was like, "Why the fuck is well, this bitch here in the first place?" And also, Nerd of the Rings brought up like I was watching his his recap. He, this was in, a volunteer force. Yeah, like that's why I hated that in season one. I'm like, you you're Numenor. You're supposed to have an army. Like you, this is the height. Of the kingdom of men. But they do have an army. They just didn't want to force... Ev- they didn't force any of them That's to That's dumb. <laughs> but then hey, we're going to Middle Earth for the first time him. in a while to fight someone. <laughs> Train soldiers? Uh, no. Not like... I don't even want to call them the ROTC. Because, like, at least they're getting, like, a class a week of training. Like, this is strictly... Vol- this is militia. This is, wow, like... Wow, Totally. And, there, and the thing is, like, militia is very effective. Welcome to America, baby. Uh, but not when you're just charging on cavalry. <laughs> wow. But, so it was. it's, I like the moment in that Muriel, like, grieves with her because Muriel has lost her father. She's lost a son. I understand that. And then, you know, the following scene, uh, like, at the bar where, yeah, again, the, the son, I'm, I, if they don't, if they pull an Alfred non-director's cut move here, I don't where, know like, what you're you ha- talking about. The son of Farazon. What's Alfred? Son from of- the Hobbit. Oh, how Alfred from like halfway through Desolation of Smaug is the worst, and then you keep having people like put their trust in him, like Alfred, like go on the watch, Alfred, do this, feed feed Bilbo, and then in the director's cut, huh. Alfred just gets away. Mm-hmm. I mean, in the in the theatrical cut, in right, the, right? Theatrical cut, Alfred gets away. In the director's cut, he gets like fed to a troll or whatever. But we don't see. I didn't see that in the theaters. So I was like, he just gets a like nothing, no comeuppance, not even a punch in the face. If that happens with Farazon's son, I I will turn into a right wing grifter and I will go full dongs of woker. I'm not literally. Am, Elon just turned in, yes. tuned in to watch this video right now. He, Elon, he, I'll buy a blue check mark, and this is all <laughs> this, all downhill if this dude does not get punched in the face at the very least. But I love the moment. Um, what's the the um, uh what's his name? The guy that confronts him. Um. Oh, it's Valandiel. Valandiel, great the moment best friend from him. of Isildur. Great moment where, like, just well, puts the this... hand on the shoulder and is like, "If you if you have anything else to say, we can step outside." Oh, because I was there. 
It's like, so good. It's so good. And they're so dumb. And, you, and we said this last episode, it, they're so dumb for just talking out in the open. <laughs> like, Farazan has no business being there. He has private quarters. He could bring them to that. Like, they, they could be having right. fucking cold jerky there. It, it makes no sense. And Volando's right there. Granted, maybe there is a political scheme here where, like, Farazan's like, I am trying to muster support. And, you know... I'm going to just say this right now. I'm really disappointed, really disappointed that Aryan didn't have a change of heart by looking into the plant here. I'm really sad that it made her even more feverish about being anti-elf. I Yeah, I, I don't know why they're portraying Numenor as, like, scared racist. Well, I mean, think about it. I can understand because they're a little xenophobic because first of all, they are this like greater race. They, they are like, they're feeling really disenfranchised by the elves and they're so sequestered. Looks like Elon's turning in right now. Hmm? Ooh. Mm. Uh, At least we got one more view. One Um, of us. One one of of Farazan. (laughs) Um, Farazan. Oh God. I know. So, but my, I guess um, I can understand them being, a little too insulated, a little too into themselves. Um, and they're making a choice to make Numenor like that because they are like removed from the experience of what Middle Earthians are, are dealing with. So it's, it's, if you don't let, like, let's, let's say it's so easy for us to have a, a, an opinion on what's going on in Africa. Right. But also we don't think about it because we ain't over there. So like, yeah. they're just so far removed. We're not in the thick of it. And that is why it's really important for someone like Valandiel to step in and go, you have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. And I will actually kick your ass. And but you that will. But the thing is that, like, I understand why, you know, the three men at the table, like, <clears throat> just kind of, like, scoff at it and stuff like that. But, like, he does say, we lost your brother over there. What are you ta- What are you doing here? Yeah. And it, do- it do- like, I'm curious to see where this show goes with her. Because, like, I don't know. When did she break into the tower and get the Palantir? Like, so the last she season? Was, she got an opportunity to... Um, I know she was at the king's the king. deathbed. Yeah. Right. And the king was confused and told her to go look at the Palantir, essentially. Or go, you know. He he thought he she, he, uh, she was Muriel. But gotcha. Muriel was in... And so the last we see of Aarian, um is her finding the door where the Palantir was. Um, which it's locked and then Muriel has to unlock it. So it must have been unlocked when Mir- when Aarian was there. Yeah. Uh, whatever. Know, like, with the we'll bracelet. Ju- um, we'll just we'll just buy it. Whatever. Um but it is a little it's a it's a little odd. That's all that's all. And and that's the thing is that like I you know we we've watched so much House of Dragon and Game of Thrones lately. Um, and so I, I love a good political scheming, uh, and like, that's what we get, you know, we get these like dark conversations and quiet whispers and stuff. And so I'm wondering what it's going to be. And then we get to the coronation and I lo- I do love the scene with Farazan and Miro of like, Oh, do you want to wear red or white red for the future white for the past? And right. she's like, I'll wear white. And he's like, I think you should wear red. And I don't know. I think he's legit giving advice here. I think like, he's like, we need to look to the future. I'm not like he wants the throne sure. for sure. I'm not saying he doesn't, but I love that he shows up in red and she's in white. I think oh, he was that- trying to pull one on her too. Like again, let's not forget their cousins, and he's like caressing her face with the. So I think he's like saying, "This is the texture of white. This is the texture of red." But for a second, I thought he was um, trying to like go, "Oh, this is the." White one, wink, wink, you know, but then I think that's why he was <laughs> surprised. <laughs> I just thought he was trying to do that, like play her a little bit. I think he was helping her, but also trying to play her. I think he was I trying to know. play her. I'm I'm not sure in what way, but I, I it just bugs me so much that, like, again, like, I understand the mom being at the funeral because I feel like it was a funeral for the king, but also for the fallen of the battle. Okay. But okay. I don't understand... Okay. How security didn't like pre-screen everybody for the coronation. What what are we doing here? And someone just yells, Queen of Lies. What? 
<laughs> what would she lie about? Insane. She said we're gonna go over to help middle our like our kinsmen in Middle Earth. Who wants to volunteer? Me? How do you have so little reverence for this person too? That's what is actually shocking to me. Is she's done very little. I don't know. I I, I guess it just can't. It feels really manufactured, Ben. I think that's what we're dealing we with We needed here. more of season one where it's like, not not the elves are going to take our jobs, but like fair, fair's on planting the seeds. Like, I don't know. I just, I think they tried in season one. It just didn't land. And so when it comes to this, where it's like, oh, like they're laying the seeds here. Oh, no, never mind. They're just chanting fair's name as an eagle lands. And that's it. I was like, wait, like, I don't know. Again, this feels very on the cutting room floor, something is missing here where like either this might've been where the showrunner wasn't allowed to be there or like they, they lost right, the showrunner right. or something like that because it feels so truncated to go from, Oh, there are, does he have his ear or is it the other way around? It doesn't fucking matter if all you need to do is chant his name when an Eagle lands. That's a hundred percent correct. Although let's just be fair too. in the moment. Aryan decides to walk in with the plant ear and it hits the ground. That is like the turning point here. So that I do like that because Ferris on plays it so perfectly because he's like, Oh no, our queen would never use this. And she's like, and Meryl just like, can't help herself. No, don't. No, we need it. I'm like, okay, dude, like, play the fucking like, okay, Ned Stark, play the fucking game for once. She couldn't. Um, yeah, you're totally right. You're totally but right. But if it would have ended there, then that's like a big like, oh my gosh, our queen uses elf dark magic, whatever you want to say. That's great. End it there. Have the coronation, but Farazon still got his foot in the door now. But instead, you have the eagle land Farazon. And uh, okay, cool. Okay, so no- actually, nothing that mattered, nothing that happened before mattered. It actually is wild that these people believed that the eagle was there because of Farazan. That's she what's had wild. her like her hands like on the the staff like this on the scepter, and like he's here for Farazan, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> it's so. Can we get it? Like, what, you World know what Cup, it is? Can we get a VAR here? Can we get an instant replay? Fake news. Because we said off camera, it's a really good allegory, which I, it, you, we know Tolkien hates allegories, and it's not necessarily one to one. But these people want to believe what they want to believe. Yeah. But it's but the fuck is eagle there because she was supposed to be coordinated. God damn it! And it didn't bless Farazon, and the second Farazon turned around, the eagle took off. The eagle's like, "This not you, bitch. I don't want you." I know, it, but, it but it's like it's, it's, frustrating. it's frustrating, but like. And I, I don't want to keep comparing this to Game of Thrones because it's its own show. But it's like if you're going to do the political intrigue stuff in a fantasy setting, it's borderline impossible to not to. There are so many moments where you get like out loud yelling at your TV like you're watching a football game in Game of Thrones of like, no, this is not what's going on. This is lies, slander, like all these things. And I wanted that. And I thought we were getting that Man. with that first scene. And then Valandia like shuts it down, and you're like, "Yeah, punch that little neck motherfucker in the face." Um, but then it just ends in a chant, and that's that. Like, I don't know. You know, we'll see next episode we have if five she still seasons. gets. We we really do. Like, Farazon does become king in the books canonically. Like, but we do have five episodes to see. Does Valandia have her back, or does Farazon try to? How, does Farazan try to marry Muriel and, you know, make everything right? Because they do get married in the books. Um, but Farazan's, Farazan's a fucking skeeve. He's a skeeve, but it, I just want more from Numenor. Like, I want them to be better. And, like, you can have, like, the fear-mongering and stuff like that. Like, people are still going to be people no matter where and when they are. But you need to have them fall from grace. That's the whole thing about Numenor, is that it fell from the light of the Valar and it never it never looked good i was I never think that's like, a really good point i i was never like whoa this is numenor this is the line of aragorn like where everybody that met aragorn oh you have numenorian blood you're 87 how that never happened in this show and that's why i i think probably my biggest complaint about it is numenor yeah. and how mid as the kids say it looked you know this is really making me go back to my earlier criticism of like by centering the story around Galadriel up front, you've really 
told us that Galadriel has to be the one to kill Sauron. The way that you know, the way that Galadriel perceives everything is is the truth. And now that we know that Sauron has been been manipulating her, we actually she's an unreliable na- narrator, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, but it would have been really nice if we could have gotten a Lord of the Rings intro where Numenor, once great, uh, now fallen in the eyes of the Valar or whatever. Like, give us like a little bit of lead up into what we need to know right now as opposed to now Galadriel has found herself shipwrecked into Numenor and we're supposed to just know these people are bastards now um like I think we could have had a little bit more pre prologue that yeah. would have helped this a little bit you you bring up a really good point um yeah chanting Farazhan at the end is really fucking dumb the eagle them taking the eagle as an omen for Farazhan's really dumb I'm curious to see where Valandiel goes because that just brief moment with him was fire. And- you know, he ruled in that scene. Like probably my favorite, like just moment from these first three episodes was just like it felt like Bane in Dark Knight Rises, where like Ben Mendelssohn's like you don't you don't do what he says. I'm in charge, and Bane just like puts his hand like backwards on his shoulder and is like. Uh, do you feel in charge? And it's just like, ah! <laughs> and it felt like that where he's just like, well, if you have anything else to say, we can step outside. I genuinely love that he was looking down for people that were upset with him in that moment and still handled business. It was really, really well written. And the tension was just right. Um, and that guy's a little bitch, baby. Little bitch, baby. Uh, we got some dwarf. I want I think I want to save the Pilar gear um for the last because we got some dwarf stuff the isildur stuff for last yeah i think so cool um we got the dwarves going to eregion and being treated with by um now anatar anatar um, anatar and uh, just an in love and on cloud nine bro he's more. literally skipping to <laughs> school every day uh, it's he understands what the bonkers. songs are about now he's so yes uh, like when, that scene from 500 days of summer where like he's dancing to your dreams my like the hall and Oates song and he sees like harrison ford in his reflection like that's Celebrimbor on his way to work every that day that is so fantastic yeah that's it that it is it exactly um i think it was last episode and we forgot to mention that Celebrimbor is like so on cloud nine that he creates moon letters like he he's just like like this is before he lets um sauron in but he's like look at this fucking cool thing i just invented right he, like anatar is his muse dude uh, yeah so he's just he's just like basking in the greatness and i do, i do love that durin is like fuck is this guy <laughs> like yeah i i do love that where like it is a good moment because, like, we we know what happens. We know where we're supposed to get. But I do love that, like, you know, you can't play everybody the same. Where yeah. he's like, oh, Elrond thought you were the wisest. And he's like, Elrond wouldn't fucking say that about me. What are you talking about? Totally. And, and that's what, like, like, I don't know if we talked about it too much last episode. But Tisa and Durin are such a lovely couple. They are so, so good on fire and they were they were locked in from season one right yep and the problem is is durin's so right but because they're going through so many things including the rift with durin the elder you know the king both called durin well it's just is canonical but and they aren't supposed to be alive at the same time durin the third is supposed to be an inc- incarnation of each durin i'm with you it also is very kingly to name your son Durin. It That's like true. it is. Like, I what was it? It, it was like it's just like hard for us. LeBron James named his first son LeBron James Jr., but he goes by Brawny. And it was like it was so funny where it's like, well, I'm not I'm not gonna wear the same number as my dad. He's like, now coming in, number three, LeBron James Jr. Oh, who's that? <laughs> oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Uh, I cut is that crazy? He's been playing in the ba- uh, in basketball that long that his son is that's wild. on the same team. It's, it's insane. Uh, he's on the same team. I didn't even yeah, know. Yeah, he that. got drafted by the Lakers. Is he good? He's. I don't want to call him a nepo baby because he might end up being good enough, but he definitely got drafted because of LeBron. That's too bad. Yeah. 
But you know but, what? There are plenty of other bad NBA players in there, so sure. I'm okay with it. Sure, give them their their just desserts. Yeah. Um. So, <laughs> I, I'm not even going to go there. Um. I I I think you're totally right. But if Sauron can read the hearts and minds, take an extra second, bro, and read into Durin's mind. You know what I mean? Like, what is? But he hasn't earned his trust, and that's the thing. Is that like he? I do like that moment where, you know, it's like once Sauron, like, has your trust, then he can do it. And so maybe Sauron's, like, still, oh. like, oh, maybe, maybe I have, like, I, I just turned into Anatar. A little and so, too like, soon. A little too, a little too r- rusty at the whole manipulation thing. Like, Kelo Brimbor wrapped around the pinky. Like, just game over, man. Like. I, if, if we don't get a kiss scene, Ben, I'm just saying no, this. No, you Hold don't on, break if- that tension. I'm saying if we don't, which will be okay if it doesn't happen, I am going to be writing a lot of fanfic and I will share my screen name, guys. I'm just going to. Save for for Patreon. I'm I'm saying it's going to happen. I might ask AI to help me do it, but I need to. (laughs) So you won't be writing it. No, but I'll be like, put them in this scenario for stage one. And and they were boys and then they kissed. (laughs) I didn't know slash fiction existed until um, the scene where um, Loki turns into Thor and like when they're talking and walking and like, oh, they, like, yes, and, yes, yes. And he turns into Jane or something. And I was like, holy shit, I ship Thor and Loki. <laughs> so I'm a Thorky. Uh, and anyway, slash fiction is a real thing. A lot of us females feel this way about boys. We want them to kiss and it's really hot. <laughs> We really do. It's a thing. Um, but the thing about like Durin going, this guy, Elrond would never say that about me. Disa trusts her husband, but then because he's got the issue with his dad, they jump and they sideline that part of the conversation. And she goes, no, this is because you just don't want to help your dad. And like this, this it's really, episode. It's really well written. It is really well written because if that wasn't going on, Disa might go, yeah, that was fucking weird, you know? Yeah. But, this episode was really good because for me in one way, and this is what Dern really offered, was you told me, Dad, that maybe though it's not ours to say whether they should live or die. That's not for us to say. And maybe we are making the wrong choice. And genuinely, that is what's making me think that Elrond's right, too. Like, should... I know that if if we believe this as our lore, which is what uh, Tolkien wanted to do, it's like this was our history. This was England's history or whatever. What if the world just ended here? Because we weren't shouldn't have gotten involved and made things more messy. I, they're just a- asking a really interesting existential question. And I like that they're making me think about the whole impact of everybody's choices here. I'm really enjoying I like that, that too. Uh, I like um, I like this conversation uh, because it does bring up like just like the multiple conflicts. I think I wish I would have gotten a little bit more about them losing sunlight and how absolutely catastrophic that would be to their economy. Sure, like like they're all you didn't li- get that. I mean, they're all lined up, and what what's the new uh, what's the new dwarves? Narvi, name? Narvi. Like, I wonder what purpose he's gonna serve. Like is he a, is he a, a a king sycophant? Is he going to be on the side of good? I'm not sure yet. I don't know that he has any. I don't see any ulterior motives in him yet. They're not they're not planting any seeds. So mm. I don't know that. I think he's just there to move the story along. It's very possible. <laughs> That's all but I just got like from the guy. I thought I was getting enough because like you know all the merchants are lined up, and he's like, all right. I love how all the merchants are lined up like, oh, I'm going to go talk to the king. Meanwhile, the king's 10 feet away with an open door. And then Durin walks in and all the bro- and, and that's all it. these guys, all these guys are like, we no, you said we could talk to it. Yeah. <laughs> Nepo babies, man. I yeah, swear. Totally. And so it's like, I was ready for that whole thing. And then it was just kind of gone. And I was like, oh, okay. I thought I was going to get more of like, cause the yeah, frustration. we see a little bit of, of it, and, you know, I can surmise the desperation there, but it's like, we saw it with the elves, where it's like, oh, the tree is, like, right, gone. Right, like, right, Like, Gilgalad is singing fond farewell, like, at, at closing time, and you gotta close out your tabs. 
Like, uh, but here it's just like, oh, my crops aren't as good, and we should open the crops outside. You know, can well, we no, get nothing's those? nothing's growing, to be fair. And Disa killed the rest of the sunlight in the previous episode. And by saying we need the ancient grains open, um, or the, the the grain storage open, and that there's only three months. By the way, you guys only are storing three months worth of food. What the fuck? Like it's it's like poor it's like Californians that don't plan for the earthquake that's inevitable. Oh my god, I saw I saw a, a tweet, and I think I made like a TikTok about it that I might post today, where it's just like Americans eat like they've got free health care, and I'm just like, oh, that. Like I, you got if if you've been following this podcast for anything more than you know a month, when it comes like America has so many problems. When it comes wow. to other people talking about America, I get extremely patriotic. The Olympics just ended, and I and literally all, like, yeah, I had like a tat a flag tattooed on my chest. Um, what was it? Someone posted like the scene from Spider Man Three of him tearing off the venom suit. It was like the patriotism leaving my body now that the Olympics are over. <laughs> it's like that's so perfect. <laughs> but it's like that that one hurt so much, and it's and it kind of is wow. perfect to where wow. And again, this is where the same with Numenor. We have been told how amazing Khazad-dûm was. How like this is the capital city of the Dwarven Kingdom, and that it was mining Mithril, the most precious gemstone of all time. We didn't really get the mining for Mithril. Even in this episode, they somehow come up with another little like cube of it, and they're like, "Oh, here, take that." It's like I want, I want to see you mining Mithril. I want to see the the splendor of this kingdom and so when it falls it feels like you get hit with it and i love the way it looked in season one you know all the waterfalls and Deesa's tree in their in their yard and stuff like that that looked great but i don't know i just didn't get this is supposed to be peacetime prime time like make middle earth great again type stuff over here where it's just like this is where everybody looks back and says, "You know what? We used to be a country." <laughs> like mega make no, make Middle Earth. Oh, make Middle Earth great again. So Mega. 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 It's too close. It's too close. <laughs> uh, but I don't know. It for me that's it's probably like the biggest criticism is just like you see it with the elves. They're just drinking. They're they're like in total denial that anything bad could ever happen, and so that works. And so the, you know the dwarves not having that much like in stock kind of makes sense to me because like they probably never thought it was going to end. Sure, sure. But I just never saw the splendor of these kingdoms. So when they fall, it's like yeah, I'm attached to the characters more than the kingdoms. But also like you know Olympus has fallen. When the White House goes down, I'm like oh man. This is so crazy that the most secure location could ever fall. Mm-hmm. Like that's the whole point right, of it is right. that you never uh, this place that you never thought could be overtaken is overtaken and I I don't get that feeling in either Kazadoom or Numenor. I I I wonder and I'm, I I totally like hear you and I think I can understand where you're coming from. I wonder if Here's here, here I'll say this first. When mm-hmm. we got the sweeping shot from the the carvings of Casa Doom outside of the mountain, pushed in, got to see their elaborate lighting system. I was like, "Where the fuck was this in season one?" But like, you can tell that they like upped the budget, and they're like, "You know what? We really got to yeah. make sure everyone know, like." Because we made fun of this when we did our rewatch, like they're just on the volume walking up to this little stone door and like, I want to, you know, it's kind of weird. They could have given us some more grandeur and given us like a hint of what cause of doom is capable of so that when we ask them to build a Regeon, we understand they can do it in two months or whatever. Exactly. But I wonder if you're, so I'm glad we got a little bit of that. And, but then right away the, the rock falls, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I we wonder, see the grandeur like 10 seconds before the earthquake exactly. hits. <laughs> but I wonder if we're suffering a little bit from the fact that we're not watching this in a four-hour movie. Uh, like, is yeah. it possible that just because you didn't live in this beautiful, peaceful, harmonious tree growing in the warmth of the the, the thing, you know, is that why you're kind of going, wait, I actually don't know Casa Doom is all that uh, grand. But you actually bring up a really good – I'm just putting that out there. 
Um, but you bring up a really good point. During the second, it was basically like, we're not getting the mithril and I'm going to take your little thing from you, son, and I don't know you, and you invoked your mother. And now he's like, but here's some mithril. Actually, yeah, we're going to, we yeah. do need this. But uh, I basically think that they're just looking at omens on all fronts. You know, yeah. Dad, we should be mining mithril and um this guy wants to help us but actually i like i'm going to tell you about this but i don't think we should do it dad for all during the third should be the one that's tempted because he's like yeah this guy wants to use mithril and during that's the a- second should be like you know what i told you no mithril that's the thing is that either either last season you need to to establish like the weakness of the of the older durin or you need to establish like the susceptibility of the younger one and now they've like flip flopped in half an episode. Yeah, this thing that completely created a gigantic rift between them now is completely and yet, suddenly, settled. suddenly, Durin the Elder trusts Celebrimbor, trusts this stranger that says rings will save your kingdom. Like when they wouldn't accept five hundred years of fucking silver plated food. Yeah, like to save like elves that they actually do know that they have treated with, and so it like. Because one mind shaft that's a collapsed. Tough, that's a tough... You're asking me to suspend a little bit too much disbelief here. Yeah. You know? But maybe it is that they're just so clouded by the fact that they weren't talking for so long, and now this is an opportunity for them to... But yeah, it, it it goes back to how much time has passed. They That is the, a big thing of this show, is that we're going to have to accept that the entirety of the Second Age is going to go into five seasons. Yeah. And we're going to end with the Battle of the Last Alliance. And we're going to have to accept that. And I have. But you need to show me how much time has passed, like, traveling between two places. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. how long had, like, like, just a line from Disa. Like, it's been months since you've talked to your father. Maybe that was in there and I just yeah. I missed it. Yeah. But it's like, you need to, to show me why Durin the Elder has done a complete 180 like that. Because yeah. even even them showing up, I didn't watch the – I didn't realize there was a post credit scene in the second episode or a mid credit scene. So, like, when the dwarves show up in a Region, I was like, oh, okay. I guess they got invited. You didn't watch that little little blip thing? I, oh. they, they, the credits rolled, and I went to bed. <laughs> They've never done anything like that didn't before. didn't credit roll. It just, it just faded, didn't it? I'm pretty sure the credits rolled. Maybe. Or I could have sworn. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I just like turned it off too soon, but I'd be very surprised. You turned it off real quick, I think. <laughs> I really do. Um, but just like when the, even when they showed up to a Reagan, I was like, oh, okay, they're there. I'm, I'm okay with that. Like, you know, sure, skip sure. like the invite, like that we all knew that was going to happen. But yeah, th- there are some things where I'm just like, okay, come on. Like, I need, I need to, to know how much time has, has passed yeah. between these events, like what's going on here. I don't know, just like certain things to where they're doing a great job. I, I'm absolutely loving this season. But this episode for sure, with the Numenor stuff, and then with the 180 from During the Elder, like just felt so truncated. I don't know yeah. if it again, we are still suffering from the strike and from COVID. So it could have it could have been affected by that, but it, it really felt like it. Yeah, I'm I'm on the same page with you. It's and again, like I think it's fair to say that I think harder about this when you and I have deep conversations about it. Like yeah. when I'm watching it, I'm like, sure, I got this. But it but then I become a little bit more critical once we're in the flow of talking about things. Um so now we're jumping over to Pilar Gear, which um Alex was a little confused because he didn't realize it was abandoned. It shouldn't I don't think Pilar Gear is supposed to be abandoned but basically oh so this does the episode open up again with another horror scene another horror scene uh with the fucking spiders bro okay so i'm i'm looking real quick and the episode ends with elrond being put in charge of the team episode two there's no right oh maybe like when anatar like he he becomes anatar like basically seals the deal there, uh-huh. and then it goes to Elrond and Gilgalad being like, "Oh, uh, Galadriel, you're gonna be accompanied," and uh-huh. it's Elrond's Seal Team Six. Like, and then you scroll a little bit past the the fade. 
scrolling past like past the fade. Oh, oh. yeah, yeah, there it is. Okay. Um, it's it's there was like multiple endings. That's yeah. what I was talking about. There was multiple endings. I guess I just missed it. Okay. Yeah. No, that's fine. You just were like, "Fuck this! I'm done." Um, I was so bad for Galadriel. So Beric is a dog, basically. Can smell out Isildur is fi- like finding. Beric's his got way. that dog in him, dude. <laughs> he's the he's your dog. He's D A W G dog. I, I kind of buy that he like outwitted the orcs. I was really nervous for him in that very Brago esque. This is uh, yes. reminiscent of Brago, but yeah, it is crazy because like he what? goes here, kills like two orcs, like bodies them actually <laughs> bodies great like best kill of the season so far or getting kicked into a tree and then speared by it you could you could be right i could i can i'll live on that that tree and then like that. he drags one and then purposely moves over so he gets like hit by a tree stump amazing so, stuff so good but it, it does do a good job of like one like it's easy for us like to care about animals obviously but like when it walks into the spider cave oh my gosh just horrible. I hate spiders so oh, fucking you? much. I like. I don't. On record, I, if I find a spider, you're not getting let outside. You're you're getting gone. It's okay. over. Okay. So I have um a little nest of baby spiders in this particular room that I let live. I don't. I don't go for them because they never have me as a house guest <laughs> because they get rid of all the other little buggies. Yeah, I do it. If it's like, on, like, me my... seeing you. Okay, got it. For sure. I, I feel you. No, me and these little baby spiders, they've been living here, and, I, and we have an understanding. I, uh, I, I respect your fear. I had more of a fear after Arachnid came out. Arachnophobia came out. Um, A-plus movie. I couldn't watch it. I don't want to watch it. All I can think about every time I put my shoes on is, is there a fucking spider in there? Every you should, time. Honestly, if you don't wear a pair of shoes for a while, shake them out. That's yep. where brown recluses live. And they have a very nasty bite. Yep. I do that because that movie, because I was yep. the right age for that to freak me the fuck out. But when Borrego, uh, not Borrego, when Barrick walks in there, I'm like, baby, what the hell are you doing? What the hell are you doing? I you know. I was so upset. But then I guess. The Sealder's just hanging out there. <laughs> like, do, do we believe that Beric woke Isildur up and he wasn't awake and conscious until this moment? See, that's what I'm wondering. Is that like, how did how did Isildur get there? Like, probably, what? The spider had, had to have dragged him there. Spider had to have dragged him there, but it's like, he must have been there for, like, did he just get there? Well, and all, right like, now, I do love right, the Beric line. was released a couple days after, right? Yeah. Not- but like... I do love the lines like, oh, that's the dark forest. Nothing survives there. It's like, didn't the dark forest like just get like made? dark? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> totally. I thought the same exact thing. It's like then. a new <laughs> landmark <laughs> here. It's a new dark forest. <laughs> yeah, but there's already lore. <laughs> right. I wish you someone would be like, calm down, Jeff. Shut the fuck up. That's exactly. <laughs> He's like, Stop trying to make the dark forest happen. <laughs> right. I love it. It is a stupid little thing, but it's so <laughs> funny present my vibe on that too but that yeah. it never comes out there <laughs> it's just like that's the new shake shack nothing ever comes out of there it's like it just got made it just what? opened today bro right? like jesus you know about my stomach guarding that's hurts. that again that's the passage of time stuff where i'm talking about like it's like even though we know that obviously season two was like or season one was two years ago it's like mordor just got formed like, how are there already, like, legends of things going on? It's so great. It's so excellent. It's so dumb. But um, they honestly do such a good job of making us forget because this spider cave is so terrifying. Like, I saw this. You are supposed to see the spider creeping up behind the sealed door, and I still fucking jumped. Like, did the, you the, really? I did. Like, the cut that they do... Before the jump where you see it like creeping and then it uh-huh. cuts to like the profile and then uh-huh. it gets him. Uh-huh. It made me jump. Like. Oh, so good. Terrible. Just the, the worst. The fight that he does and the way. You know, like I love a good, like we talked, I, I love a good fight sequence. I okay. love when they do something cool. I like when they invented like the flip where the motorcycle goes underneath the light and then it flips and then, now the motorcycle's upside down because you're watching it go down the street the other direction. I love fucking clever shit like that. It is 10 out of 10 clever. 
to make him throw the spider and the spider be able to catch his head and whip back. Terrifying, the, dude. It was the coolest thing I've ever seen. And it was brilliant. Someone needs to get a raise. They are, they are, they just got graduated from like, like apprentice to fucking owning their own digital company. Truly, like, you're so right. Cause I know exactly the moment you're talking about. Because you see it coming, like he's reaching behind you, like, yeah, throw it over your shoulders. And, he, right. and then he does that, and then just grabs his face and whoop, and right back. back. Horrible and amazing. So that's whoever did that really deserves a raise. Congratulations. I hope you find this video. Yeah, that was like straight out of like a martial arts like counter move where like you're like, oh yeah, if he sweeps the leg or something, and then you sweep the leg and then you get punched in the face. It's brilliant. Like, <laughs> brilliant. Best thing I've ever seen on TV. It was brilliant. Terrifying. Truly um, awful. Hated and, it. And but nothing is worse. Nothing is worse worse than the babies you can't tell me Beric didn't die there there you guys first of all the when babies are like scorpion babies and spider babies yeah they have the more most, powerful poison i know and they have less control because it's not actually more powerful poisonous they have less control over how much poison they they put in and so they're like to get ah and so Beric should be dead <laughs> i don't know well it's it's what like um like, do you think like the poison is even lethal like she lobs poison like is that why isn't like, did why isn't Beric passed out? Like, I'm just saying. He doesn't that get he, bit. How could 700 spiders dropping on Beric not bite them? Doesn't happen. I'm just saying it's weird. It's a, it's like, what are you asking me to buy here? Just that he's yeah, covered they in put spiders? Like, they put in like one too many spiders, it looks like. It's like, have, have the like the medium-sized spiders all attacking him. That really works because, you know, we can see the fangs and stuff like that. Right. And then, you know, obviously we can see like Beric like stomp them out. But like having, uh-oh, zoomy time. Oh, it was a big cat time. She, like, got up off the bed, like, huh, gotta go! <laughs> uh, but, uh, but having, like, the little baby spiders that you can't keep track of, and it's just like, oof. Like, they, they definitely work for the creep factor, but yeah, I understand what you're saying. I didn't have a problem with it, because I think the scene, like, it reminded me of The Mist. Um, sure. The, the pharmacy scene with the, in The Mist, where it's just, like, the absolute worst. I don't remember uh, that scene. Uh, highly recommend uh, no no i watched it and i was sad thomas jane and the yeah. ending's very sad and didn't uh, but I, but it was horrible it was a hard watch for me definitely a hard watch um, uh but yeah they they get out of the cave uh he travels um sees quote-unquote the dead marshes but not really but definitely like kind of like an homage to yeah. it and gets a fresh pair of boots from a numenorean soldier love that no matter what wherever you find boots they fit you it's very D D. I love yeah that. except for die hard which is why die hard so good yep exactly yeah so also, like I, I the one thing i always you know how uncomfortable it would be to walk in like shoes that aren't yours that are soaking wet that'd be the worst you get so many blisters well, he's not walking in them. He's on Beric. That's true. That's and so true. I, I bought that it was like drying off while he was riding. But then he comes upon a, upon a camp. The girl stabs him. What a cute meet cute. And okay. Again, this is like not, I, I don't want to be that nitpick, but like she stabs him in like the femoral artery. <laughs> like, why, well, first of all, she doesn't know to not take it out, but she knows to tie it off. <laughs> Like, yeah, you know, like just stab because I don't know. I I guess like probably just like too many action movies and too many things that I've seen, and I'm sure a lot of people are also like getting stabbed in the thigh is like a really dangerous. That's like the biggest artery in your body. It's like, the back of the leg, though. Uh, is that is that artery? So, um, it's like, a knife. It went through his leg. It's a. It was a dagger. It's about that big. How big is your thigh? My thigh's pretty damn big, bro. I've been like, okay, it's a dagger. Like, it could have. Boom. That's okay, your whole thigh. Maybe, maybe it did oh. cut that. Maybe it did. I, I mean, obviously, it didn't hit his femoral artery, though, because. I know. I'm just saying. Like, stab him in a different place. Like, I'm, I'm more like, <laughs> if she would have stabbed him, like, right okay. on the side or something, somehow that's a more survivable, quote unquote, movie wound. In, sure. In, like, yeah. Totally, totally. Like he shouldn't. He shouldn't be alive. I totally get it. Um, 
I think we all buy that she's fine. She's a nice lady, you know. It's a good meet cute. Like where she's like, "Well, I've never stabbed anybody." He's like, "Yeah, I've never been stabbed." <laughs> that actually is pretty darn cute. It, it's like, very cute. I I'm totally on board, and I ship them automatically. Like, do you? Yeah. Okay. I do, especially like it, they they cement it with the conversation they have later. But I'm also like I'm on board with their chemistry from moment one. Totally, there is chemistry, one hundred percent. Then they get to the camp of the most obvious setup in the world as they're heading to Pilar Gear. Um, the most obvious bad guy. The most obvious, like, caravan. Like, he's got no teeth. He's gonna... <laughs> anyway, I guess the Sildor is just a little dum-dum. Is... Jess and her class war continues. <laughs> <laughs> Who are these hobos at the side of the road? <laughs> saying the bitch should have been there she opened palm slapped muriel with a seashell in her hand come on uh but um but it's also like a frustrating moment because like i wish i i love the fight that like a steel door like has here but like you have him recognize a moment before it happens he sees the mark at ours mm-hmm. mark yeah. but then he doesn't do anything he still gets got and i'm just like oh well like just have him get got. That's totally fine. He gets ambushed, but don't have him. I don't know. Again, I don't want to be like a rewriter here, like this whole podcast. But just like it felt like a like in the same way of last episode, where it's like, oh, you could have had a bar fight with the dwarves. This felt yeah. like a oh, you could have had an Isildur growth moment with his <laughs> IQ of like, oh, bad guy, and then like he can still lose the fight because there's like four people, and you have a Rondier come in and you know. Uh, quadruple backflip uh, ice skate twist and save everybody but like have him recognize what's going on before it happens and do something about it. I'm a little okay with it now that I'm thinking about it because you're totally right in that moment. I was like what the hell's Isildur? Isildur? But again he did say I've never been stabbed before. You've said this before. Numenor doesn't have an army. These guys aren't trained. Yeah. And the Isildur we know from the books and from the movie is nowhere near the guy, th- this guy here. He needs to train. He needs to learn how to fight. He needs to learn how to square off with Sauron. So we're watching little baby Isildur figure out that, like, not you're not going to just survive. Your mom's not here to save you from the ocean, bro. You know? Like, so I, th- I think we're just dealing with um, inexperienced Isildur. For sure. I- I'm with that. Uh, we get to, uh, Arondir comes in, yeah. does his hurly twirlies and wow. saves he's him. So he's like, he's, he's a so broken bad. man. I can't believe how unceremoniously she just died. Like it's the worst part of this show. Yeah. I mean, like, I respect it, it, her choice to not come back. Yeah. 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 No, no, no. I, I don't I, know if I respect their choice to not recast her. Um, that's what it, I don't get. You know, you you, like, ca- you recast Adar, recast Bronwyn. I think the show, like, I don't know what they're gonna do with um, Theo. So I will, I will wait on that. But having them kind of like restart their arc, like that moment in season one when they do like the family hug, that shit worked. I that know. worked. Like I he know. finally accepted him. Like even you can, doesn't have to be like as a father, but like you know, like. He accepted him as like a, a guardian, a protector, a friend, something Someone like that. Someone who was there for him and yeah. like had his Save- back. And then like her being completely fine and right. then being like, oh, well, she eventually succumbed to the arrow. Oh, my God, dude. Come on now. Like, Come uh, on now. He's an elf. He could have done some chewy, yeah. you know, a la thing. She's literally a healer. Like. It's it's a it's it's the biggest uh, leap that they're asking me to accept. Which, by the way, we just can't deal. We just have to deal with it. Um, it's and I think that's why we're getting the Isildur. Um, oh, what's her name? Love story. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I don't know either. Hold but on, and, he, and and she says, "I'm looking for my betrothed." Obviously, this bitch is lying. She had been lying to us. She lied. She I lied. don't know. I think she might be, but I don't think she's looking for a betrothed. Do you think that she's like a spy for Adar? No, not necessarily. She could be. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. She could be. Maybe. 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> the five stages of grief just happened on screen, everybody. <laughs> Goodbye, Bronwyn. Um, no, she's just like not- Estrid. Estrid. Es- Estrid. Ooh, a weird name. Um, I I just think she's not. She's not telling us everything. No, I, I, I like the moment where, you know, they they talk about, like, their past sins and what happened with Isildur's mom, how she saved him and sacrificed her life, and no one really knows that story. I don't even know if Elendil – do you think I don't, Elendil I knows it. that? I doubt it. I don't think he does. Um, And I like that. And then as she – like, you wonder why she's, like, heating up a dagger, and then we see why. It's because she's got the brand on the back of her neck and uh goes to, like – Burn it off, basically. Old like tattoo gonna, removal. Like someone's not going to see that. Like, hey, you freaking next blister. You good? <laughs> like, what's hey? Like, yeah, it's just my curling iron. <laughs> <laughs> those are those suck. <laughs> those, I those cannot. Bl- I not a day goes by that I am not glad that I am a man simply for cosmetic reasons. <laughs> like I would, I I burned off my uh fucking fingerprints several times like ah, ah. <laughs> yeah awful awful crazy um i have such a high paid tolerance uh but but it, it all works and i do ship them and you know theo crying in the background and like having some catharsis while they're talking is it works too like this thing is that they they do their best with these scenes that they can where like theo just unceremoniously comes up and like lights his mom on fire just like we're done yeah and then the next scene where uh you know they're talking and he's like you know the the quote we opened the show with of was like i didn't know my father but i know he's not you like any connection we had just got burned to ashes we're done yeah that's a tough scene that's a tough scene and like it's very well written dialogue I just don't like that we're restarting that arc. I don't know if they're going to get back together or, you know, like, you know, come together again. But I I liked where we ended season one with that trio. And now that trio is completely disbanded. And also, like, RIP to Bear McCreary's beautiful score, the Bronwyn and Aranda yeah. score. Cause, and, they, and they played it one last swelling time. I doubt he'll reuse that. But it really was a beautiful score. It was. And I was sad that I don't know. They may reuse it for um, Estrid and Isildur. I don't know, but there's. Not, I don't think they should. Uh, no, because it works for the Bronwyn stuff, and I yeah. don't know. It, we just needed them, and and I was, yeah. It's just tough. I I don't know that. You know, um, did you watch Arrested Development? No. Uh, there's an actress who plays the love interest for Jason Bateman in the first season, and then she gets recast. And it doesn't okay. work because the the chemistry isn't there, and so oh, they end up okay. getting rid of that whole love line in particular. Not that I think he's ever would have been allowed to have a successful relationship because that's basically the whole conceit of the story. Um, but like, it doesn't. It they recast her for whatever reason. I'm sure the actress just left or whatever, and it didn't. There wasn't chemistry, so I'm sure that was the risk of recasting Bronwyn, too. But um, definitely. Theo is on like a teen war path where he's like, you know what? I don't care about my life. I don't care about anything. And I'm going to go talk to these wild men and, you know, risk yeah, it all. What was the plan here? That's what, that's the thing. So <sighs> there wasn't, we, we fast forward and where he's like, Oh, is still, did you want to get your horse back? Like, you know, meet me here at midnight or whatever. And that's when is and Estrid have their heart to heart. And then they leave and is <laughs> has got the horse. He's yeah. good. Yeah. And I do love the kind of like, quote unquote, ticking clock of the man chopping wood. I'm like, what's going to happen mm-hmm. with him? Because mm-hmm. you keep hearing him. They keep cutting to him. Like, he's going to stop and appear behind a steel door or something. Or, yeah. I don't yeah. Know. Yeah. Yeah. And then. Uh, oh. Like, I didn't know what was going to happen. And uh, I just love that. What happens with that? Sorry, I lost my train of thought for a second. No, it's but okay. Just like, go ahead. No, because so I want to. I want to go back for a second. Where um, the 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 bad guys steal Barrick, and yes, Isildur's like, uh, uh, Rondier's like, do you? I'm not going to help you. You know, whatever. And fucking Isildur lets Bear go. Like we don't see him like go after that. It's just like he just is like completely like, oh, forget it. I'll just go to this funeral instead. It's insane and doesn't like try to get people together to go get Barrick. Barrick almost died to spiders to save you, bro. And you just let that. 
I, I know he realizes he's outmatched, but like he's not trying to bandy people to help him at all. Yeah. So I'm just I'm bothered by that. And then what happens um is I, I just realized uh the the axe chopping guy is um cutting into an ant wife and that's why the ants are like fuck you and that's what ends up happening those guys get- i don't think he's cutting into an ant wife specifically i think he's just cutting into a tree and they're pissed and then the yeah they're just pissed. mad yeah, 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 yeah. in the same way like in you know fango and forest the minute gimli even raises his axe they start like yeah 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 true so that's uh, what happens. But. Yeah. And I, I do love that. I love the tease of that. But just like, I don't know what Theo's plan was. And he could be breaking bad here. He could be like, maybe, you know, I've got this mark. Maybe I can be a part of the, the wrong side. So? I don't know, man. I think, I you know, I, I've never lost a parent, so I can't I think comment on how it de- feels. I think I think he's lost. I think he's got a death wish. Like his, he reminds me of like a cutter a little bit. I think he could be lost, but when someone's lost, the minute someone reaches their hand out, they're gonna take that direction. Possible. So That's I think possible. if he runs into Adar or you know even Anatar or whoever, or you know a, a very cunning Southman, like something's gonna happen with you. Well, because I think he likes a sealder. I don't I think, think he does. Okay. Well, well like, what I'll makes you think you... he likes a sealed door? Because he's like, I'll help you. I'll help you go get your horse. He, that's you that's being a teen. A, think... That's a rebellious teen thing. He's like, he's oh, like, like let's yeah, go I've got the keys to my day. dad's car. Let's yeah. go. Yeah, well, he wants to hang out with the sealed door, see if he can hang. Well, like, he even, like, he's being, like, a little shit about it. He's like, well, if Numenor's so great, why'd you leave? It's like. Oh, okay, that's dude. so true. Yeah, yeah. He, I don't know. He's he's lost a little babe who needs who needs someone to love him. And you're oh, right. Yeah. He's he's being a little stinker, but little stinkers can turn into you know neo Nazis. <laughs> 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 we see him shaving his head with a seashell right? next episode. That's how we're gonna find out he's got elf ears, man. Damn, I, I still think you're way wrong about that. And they they put they put it to the ground like you're not my dad. Um. I think I think it's possible now that we don't have Bronwyn in the story anymore, but I think that's where we were going before the actors maybe, left. Maybe. Um yeah, I, I I don't have an instinct as to what's going to happen, but I think you're probably on the more right trail that um Theo is going to be yet again tempted to to find some semblance of home and it could be in the wrong direction. Um, although if he sees the power of the Ent wives here, he may go, holy shit. Like he might kind of like whip into shape based off be. of what happened. Cause they saved their damn lives. They saved their damn lives. Um, anything else to talk about this episode? No, a solid, like, I, I think I predicted that like, you know, the battle of a was going to be, you know, the big oh, cl- you cliffhanger did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I was very, very wrong about that, but I'm okay with the pace of this show right now. I'm, I'm really enjoying like the. It's actually character building. I feel like that was a big excuse of like last season. Like, oh, we got to know the characters. We kind of did, but we still could have used a little more action, in my opinion, in season one. And, you know, I I said like, oh, we could have used like a bar fight here or there. Like, yeah, there were things that like I I had criticisms about. And there's going to be things we have criticisms about in this show. That's that's the point of it. Like, we're not just going to unabashedly just slurp everything that comes our way. But I really enjoyed the first three episodes. I thought it was a great three episode premiere. I am on board with everything going on. Obviously, there's more interesting storylines than than others. But I think even from last season, there's no storyline that I'm just like, get it off screen. Yeah, I don't want it. And I think every storyline is doing their damnedest to be interesting. And I'm very curious how they're all going to come together. So uh, the other thing I was thinking about, a lot of people have some similar criticisms. It's like, make the Numenor thing make sense. Make the Stranger thing tie in. I'm still not seeing how these things tie in. I And you put up, you, you're, you're, you're saying it so right. And you said in a couple last episodes, we are going to watch these people get, take hit after hit after hit after hit after hit. And Sauron yes. wins a lot. And I think that's why we have the Stranger. And yes, Gandalf and the wizards didn't weren't known to be in Middle Earth during the the um, Second Age, but Manway and the Valar know some shit's going down, and they sent this motherfucker to come and help. That yes. is because, like, I was thinking, like, what Duran was saying, 
who are we to say we should change the fate of things? They sent the stranger because some they know what's happening. So what right right now we're watching the long crawl for him to get them out from under the influence of Sauron. And he probably dies and he probably gets sent back and comes Gandalf the Grey later on. You know, or so I'm just saying, like, I think that 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 I'm putting I'm putting like my big five season arc over this going. The reason we have this guy is because the Valar is like, you're going to need some serious help from us. And this is us helping getting in the middle of it. Yeah. Like, I I like the the Kieran Hines appearance, like what he's got to do with this. Who is that? You mean the Uh, Dark dark Wizard? Yeah, the Dark Wizard. What the hell? Why didn't the Eagles say anything? The Eagles can talk. I don't. I I think. I'm I just think saying. that would have jumped the shark a little bit for everybody that hasn't read the books. Because the Eagles it. have never talked. They didn't Even talk? Like they, they didn't talk in The Hobbit. Okay. Uh, they, All right. So I, I'm with you. I was waiting for him to start talking because like, I would have yeah, yeah. fucking ah! loved it. Like, because it was so cool it. when it swooped in, dude. It was like a fucking yeah. breathtaking moment. But, but honestly, it's just like if he would have been able to talk, he would have been like, bitch, what the fuck? Get the fuck away from me, Ferris. <laughs> Why is your fucking sword out, bro? Why are you right? getting red, bro? <laughs> right. Anyway, we enjoy doing this with you guys so much. Thank you for lending us your ears, eyes, headphones, screens. And we really do like being the 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 two people on the internet that aren't trying to bash this show. We are not trying to hate monger in order to get the clicks. We're not doing clickbaity titles so that you... Oh, do they like it or not? Or are they trolls or are they, you know, we really just want to tell, like, we want to talk about this in a way we love it and not pull the punches if it's not, if they miss the mark. So if you like what we did, we really do need your help to get the message out there so that we are louder voices than the trolls and the haters. Share, click like, hit subscribe, let your friends know about this, join our Discord, join our Patreon for free, or support us at the $5 tier level where you can get access to early episodes if they can, if we can do it. We're also doing a Game of Thrones podcast over there called Podcast of the Thrones. Uh, we have two seasons of our House of Dragons podcast over there. So there's just a couple, if you if you really do value what we're doing, there's so many different ways you can show us from free to a little bit of it, a little bit of paid. So please help us out. Thank you guys so much for watching. It really does mean a lot. And we are going to be doing, uh, speaking of Discord, if you guys want to join there, uh, for the $5 and up tier on Patreon, we're going to be doing Discord discussions about every single episode starting this Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Today is Sunday, the September 1st. September 1st, so Tuesday, September 3rd, right. uh, will be our first Discord discussion, guys. We'll be on there for probably like 30 or so minutes. Maybe this first one will be a bit longer because we're discussing three episodes but every – we'll just keep in the Discord because we're going to be – like I, I bartend, so sometimes my schedule changes. But we're going to be doing Discord discussion every week about every single episode, y'all. We are in prime time. Uh, everything Jessica said about like clickbaity, like hate watching, all that stuff, that's all very true with an asterisk because if Farazon Sun doesn't get punched in the face, we will be turning into that podcast We're immediately. We're on Farazon punch face. Watch. I am on yeah. Farazon like the clock is ticking. Okay, Amazon? Like I'll forgive you for, you know, poor wages and bad factories you and can't Jeff say Bezos that. You can't super say yacht. That. <laughs> like community we're so like you'll forgive racism <laughs> you, can't, you, can't, you can't say that <laughs> uh but i need this man to get punched oh, in the face i need him cast, to get punched in the face you got cast to get punched in the face like man. like really they literally did. like i i need them looking through headshots like mm, it's like a seven out of ten this guy's got a ten out of ten and this is nothing against the actor he's no. doing a great job of being a punchable face Gone that is girl. the pl- they cast Ben Affleck literally quoted as saying because you want to punch him. <laughs> That's yeah. why they cast him. And also the thing that we didn't bring up when Valandia's like, I'll fucking go right now. He's Isildur saved his life, bro. Like, and you're turning like, so yeah, now let's punch this guy. He deserves punch good- him. Punch him. <laughs> but yes, I'm really enjoying the first three episodes. I am so excited for what's to come in this season. Uh, like, we haven't even gotten any action yet, let alone like the big battles we're gonna get. Got I'm so invested in these. Worlds. Yeah, I'm ready for Arondir to take on Dimrod, the Stone Stone Giant Killer, which is a wild name. If we like, I don't know if they're the same Stone Giants from the Hobbit. No, but 
Like, that's a wild name. Because they're alive in The Hobbit. It could yeah. be the same breed. It could be the, the, the ancestors. Yeah, Dimrod, Dimrod the stone giant, stone giant killer. What would your epitaph be? Of... I can't say that word. You ben, did. ben the bro. Ben, I don't know. Ben the bro Goddard. Yeah, Ben the bro. That sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> Jess is going to go ask Chad GPT for my nickname. Shut up. Hey, it's a great tool. Anyway, we really love doing this with you guys. Go to patreon.com forward slash podcast in the rings to see all the cool things we do there. If you're listening to us on a podcast, leave a five star review. Tell us how come I give you the ick. Or if, you, if I give you the sick, uh, or, <laughs> or join our Discord for free, you can do that. All that information's in the liner notes of this show. And until next time, Ben. May our paths meet again. Give him the sick. <laughs>